Hi, this is Mike Spivey of the Spivey Consulting Group, and I promised a part two of our doxing, outing, revealing yourself online podcast. I hope this one will be a little shorter. It's on what I would describe as sort of the darker side of outing yourself, doxing yourself. What I mean by that is we talked on our previous podcast about how if you reveal anything that schools might know about you, and they do know a lot, if you just think about all the information that's gathered in your application. We talked about how if later on during the cycle, if you said something like, I'm just using Princeton Law School to get more money, I'll never go there, then the admissions people at Princeton Law School might be keyed in on the seeing their name, then start going through your post history, figure out who you are, and might be less inclined to admit you for yield protection reasons. But there's another part that comes into play, more rare, and I, I, would, I will compliment this generation of applicants. I actually see, sadly, ridiculous, immature, insecure, nasty, repulsive behavior on message boards more from people in their 30s and their 40s, even in their 50s, than I do from people who I interact with on a daily basis, which is mostly people, you know, around age 20 to 27 on Reddit. But you do from time to time see people say things that they shouldn't say that I wish they wouldn't think. And at times it's so offensive or repulsive that it clues in sort of a stampede of admissions officers to make note of. Someone asked me online last week if admissions officers ever talk about applicants together. The answer is pretty much a a hard no. It's arguably, particularly if you reveal data, scholarshiping, etc. I'm not an antitrust lawyer, of course, but it could be considered as a violation of antitrust laws. But I would say that if someone said something online that was so repulsive that an admissions officer figured it out, it's very possible they would tell LSAC who could tell the galaxy of law schools. But let me not go that deep. Let me first talk about a real example. This comes from my business partner when she was at Harvard, Karen. Uh, She told me yesterday, but I'm still not sure I'm going to get the story exactly right, but there was a transitional period where someone was out on leave. There was a brand new dean of admissions. The two people running the admissions office were female. And Harvard goes rather slowly at times, every year, no matter who runs the admissions office. Someone online said they should just hire a man to run the office so we can get our decisions. So I mentioned yesterday in my podcast that how much time admissions officers dedicate toward figuring out who is the person that said what is often a reflection of how sensitive the admissions people are to the comment and how amped up they are by the comment. Well, Karen, my business partner, listened to my podcast and said, you better believe that we were amped up by that comment and we dedicated a lot of time and resources to figuring out who that person was. That's a good example. So why would someone say that? Well, they just want, in this crazy world of snarky comments and upvotes, my guess is that, I mean, I, you know, this is years ago, and obviously I don't know the person. They, don't, they didn't really think that having a male running the office would expedite the admissions process. I hope they didn't think that. But they thought it would be light and funny and people would upvote it. Well, what it really did is probably get them flagged by Harvard and what if they had a 174 and a 4.0 and had worked really hard for those over a four or five year period and threw it all away because of a stupid comment online. There was someone three years ago who was obsessively harassing me to answer a question that I had already I had already answered it, so I wasn't just going to keep repeating myself. This person, I think, got banned on Twitter. They made a bunch of Twitter accounts with my name in it. There was a Facebook group that applicants started about this person, but unfortunately, deans of admissions 
this person was so unhinged in some of their comments, not just to me, but also directed at deans of admissions, talking about their attractiveness and other things, that I know for a fact a number of schools figured out who the applicant was, and this person probably had much worse results than they could have because they wanted to get attention online. I could do a whole podcast, and maybe I will. I'll probably do it on my other blog because it's more universal, spiveyblog.com on almost the psychology behind why people say what they say online and how easy it has become for me to ignore what people say. I, you know, I used to, when I was in my early 30s, late 20s, and I first saw my name online, I would get a cheap buzz over the kind things and I would get you know, a little amped up over the unkind things. And that's just well in my past. I'll end on a quote from Maya Angelou, who said, I believe, when people show you who they are, believe them. And that's how you should think of admissions officers, their mindset when they're reading what people say online. If someone says something disgusting or revolting, the admissions officers take that for who the person is, probably understandably so. Once again, this was Mike Spivey at the Spivey Consulting Group. This is on our admissions page. If you're feeling down, if you're feeling like the cycle is dragging out, the waiting is often the hardest part. We also just recently put up another blog. Everything there is for free. There's no business side to this. It's spiveyblog.com. And it's basically just upbeat messages and stories. And we know that the waiting is the hardest part of this. It can really get at people. And particularly when you're seeing you know, online, other people were admitted. So feel free to go to spiveyblog.com too. Thanks again for listening.